Those who've walked out on first dates, what was your, I'm out of here, moment? Story one. I had a blind date set up by my grandparents. I love my granddad and he's done so much for me, so I went. We met at a bar where my best friend worked. We get drinks and I'm talking to my friend. He says, this is trying to hook up with you. Number one, he's not gay. Number two, it wouldn't matter if he was. Number three, he was just checking in on me. So I'm already done with him at this point, but my ride is still over an hour away. His mate shows up at one point and starts trying to flirt with me. It was gross. My date then starts asking about my hot friends and if I can get them to come out. I said, I don't like my friends, so no. He started being racist against Pacific Islanders and was horribly rude to this German guy there drinking. When my ride got there, I said, I'm leaving. He said, I've got a big package. You should come home with me. I said, thanks, but I'd rather go blind. The next day, he messaged me and said, you probably think I'm a bit of a jerk after last night, but do you want to go out again? I had no intentions of ever seeing him again, so I explained why his behavior was unacceptable and suggested he try making friends or girls so he sees them as something other than a toy to have fun with. I told my grandparents everything. He told his parents, and apparently his dad was super embarrassed. My grandparents were then informed to stay out of my love life, and any time they brought it up, I'd just say, I've got a big package. You should come home with me. Honestly? Thanks, but I'd rather get a pap smear from a dentist. Would have been a funnier response. Story 2. Went first for a walk and he did not shut up at all for one hour, complained about everything and everyone in his life, not even asking nor allowing me to give a comment. Sat down, he orders food for me, without even asking, and gets his drink, the bartender mentions the caps are difficult to open, but he arrogantly and rudely brushes them off, and tries to open them himself but ends up spilling juice all over himself. He yells like it was the staff's fault and that the country he's from is superior. No regard for people, just yelling. At that point, I wanted to get under the table because that was actually a restaurant I frequently visit, from a small town with just a handful of restaurants. He continued to talk about how superior and, above all, how incompetent he was, and when he becomes manager, he would fire people like that. Continues with complaints for another hour. I offered to split the check considering that he talked about money issues, and because I obviously did not want to see him ever again, so did not want to feel like I owed him anything. He yells at me, I leave the money on the table, and walk off. He basically continues yelling at staff for going after the check, again with a in my country talk about how they have it on the spot, grabs my hand and says angrily to wait for him, asked me literally two questions. Finally, I said I would grab a taxi, but he forcefully insisted on walking me home. To avoid him making another scene, I accept. We walk in silence. I try to take him off and leave, but he insists on following me home as there are probably some dangerous people around. He tried to force himself on me on my front door, even though I said I don't think it will work. In his exact words, you owe it to me. We went on a date and I did not waste my money for nothing. I literally pushed him off as he was skinnier and threw another $20 besides the ones I already left for my meal in the restaurant at his face, saying, Here, we're done. Got instantly in the yard, locked the fence while hearing him yell and sent him a text that I will call the police if he does not get out of there. He left. The worst part is, his aunt was our neighbor. My mom knew his mom and were good friends. The next day on my way out, she literally had the audacity to ask, How did it all go? I'm pretty sure she heard him screaming awful things since literally their house is like 10 meters from mine, across the street literally, and I told her, you should have raised him better. They never spoke to me again. I'm absolutely fine with that. He was from Serbia, and I do not hold it against Serbian people, quite the opposite, nor do I think that was something related to his country or their mentality, but his own personal shortcomings and insecurities, and he was probably trying to, I don't know, impress me or show off or boost his ego, probably all of that. There are jerks like that probably everywhere, so it is not that, even though, yeah, Balkan countries in general still have more patriarchal, toxic masculinity and macho man syndrome issues compared to some of the more developed European countries, their Serbian mentality and standard culture is similar a lot to ours, North Macedonia, because not so long ago, like literally when my grandparents were young, these countries lived in the Yugoslavia community, and our mindset, culture, and development may not be the same, but it is pretty similar and we share a lot of similarities in culture. So I do not think it was that much of a cultural difference or whatnot, rather projecting and lashing out to compensate for personal insecurities. Story 3. He was a friend of a friend. He went to a restaurant and ordered our food. While we waited, he started to say things like, First I'll eat this meal, then you next. I laughed because I thought he was joking. I thought he was just nervous and his mouth lost its filter. Then when the waitress later asked if he wanted more to drink, he was like, Yes, bring us something strong. I said not for me and that I have to drive later and just wanted a Coke, and he looked at me and was like, don't be stupid. Do you think I'll have my way with you once and let you leave? You'll at least stay the night. The waitress looked at me with wide eyes like I'm crazy for even being there. After she left, I told him that he had to stop with this, that it was rude, and that we were on our first date. He apologized, and for ten minutes, it was okay. Then, as if a switch was turned on, he said just like that, mid-sentence without even ending his previous story, you know what? I can't control myself anymore. Either we go now or on this table. He told him to go to the bathroom. He complained like a baby that we have to go now. I went anyway and went to the waitress, paid for the food, and left without a word. 
Hey, by the way, this video is sponsored by me and my friends at Rufus Rugs. We create custom, hand-tufted rugs that perfectly reflect your style. So whether you want to get one of our thumbnails as a rug for, you know, research purposes, or maybe you just want to get some cool anime-style rugs for your room, check out Rufus Rugs by clicking the first link in the description. Story 4. I work in fine dining. A friend of mine showed up to my restaurant on a first date with a guy who arrived buzzed as a skunk. She's an absolutely beautiful, hilarious woman with a great career, truly a catch. Friday night, full restaurant, their table in the middle of the floor where everyone could see. He continued to burn through three bottles of wine and started making some bad jokes about her looking loose. She suggested he stop drinking. He reached across the table and hit her. We all ushered her out. A bunch of men at other tables were about to rough him up, but we held him back until he paid his bill. He didn't have enough money and said he was planning on making her split the $300 tab with him. We called the cops. Bye, Patrick. Another time I helped a woman sneak out of the back of a restaurant after eavesdropping on a horrible date. Their table was right by the service station. He had spent the entirety of the day complaining about his ex-girlfriend's eating disorder. From the minute they sat down and ordered drinks, oh wow, you're having wine? That's so refreshing. Max was anorexic. She had to count the calories of freaking everything. Blah, 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 etc., etc. The dude never stopped. Women dipped at him between the first and second courses. Are people going on dates when they should be spending the money on therapy? The new meta? Story 5. We go to a bar and meet this cute girl and we get along pretty fine. She invites me back to her place, but it turns out that she was with her friends at the bar and they were just giving her some space for us to talk. They were all buzzed, and her friend was insisting on driving home, so her friend agreed to let me drive them home because the friend was very set on not leaving her truck parked outside a bar overnight. We got all the way to their apartment complex and then getting into the parking spot was tricky, so the buzzed friend or truck owner insisted on parking and pulled the I legally own this vehicle card. I was some guy her friend just met at a bar, so I was like, okay then. Within five seconds, she backs the truck into a drainage ditch and gets it stuck. We all have to push the truck and get covered in mud. While we were doing that, the girl I met at the bar had lost her wallet, so we dug through the mud water ditch at like 4 a.m. and didn't find her wallet. We get back to her place and the mood is definitely ruined, so we end up eating a random cheese and meat platter from Safeway on her kitchen floor at like 4 a.m. I sleep on the couch and wake up early and I think, well, she was great. It was just the whole truck thing that ruined it. I look for a pen and paper to write down my number before leaving. All I can find is a piece of paper taped to the inside of the door. It was a court date notice for a domestic foul play hearing. I just left and chalked it up as a strange night. Story 6 He started making comments about me, then took me to his house to use the bathroom before the next part of our date. We had lunch first, then were supposed to play mini golf. I didn't know he lived with his parents, so I had to meet them on the first freaking date. They were nice, but I felt so uncomfortable because I already knew this wasn't going to move beyond date number one, thanks to his remarks. He told me to wait in his room while he went to the bathroom, and I noticed that his computer was on. Before our date, he was chatting with a friend, and he left it up on the screen. The last message he'd sent said, I hope I get to see her under all that. What? Why well, leave that up and send me in there to see it? I lied, saying that my mom called with an emergency and needed me back home. Nope right out of there and never spoke to him again. Story 7. I was meeting someone from an online dating app. He turned up with pupils the size of dinner plates and was super erratic. He said he'd forgotten his wallet, so he got the first round. We were on the way to the second pub to meet his mate so they could lend him some money. For the walk there, he spoke absolute nonsense nonstop, but ended with how he tried to mess with his ex's chihuahuas in a pool. Near the pub, he said he had to answer whoever was calling him on the phone. At this point, we were 30 minutes into the date and already going to the next pub. He downed his drink in about three seconds. Whilst he stood there on the phone, I said I would meet him at the pub. Everything was all in close proximity, but instead walked past it and ran all the way home. If that guy managed to get her to say yes to a date, then anything is possible at this point. If you don't want this guy to show up in your DMs, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel right now. Story 8. She wouldn't stop making fun of me. She was 26 and I was 36, though if it matters, we were at the same place in our careers and income, and she kept making ageist jokes about how I was old and decrepit. Eventually, after telling her pretty directly to lay off, I just said, you know, I'm not enjoying this, I'm going to go, I paid for the table and left. Later, she said it was because she was overcompensating because she was self-conscious about how much younger she was. But that just means that when she's uncomfortable, she goes straight to demeaning the other person. Story 9. I have a gem. Before I met my husband, I went on a date with a guy I met on a dating app. He seemed kind of cute and normal. We clicked through messages, so we decided to meet for coffee at a park. Well, within five minutes of conversation, this man mentions his cat. I like animals, I have animals, so I say, what's your cat's name? He tells me, along with the other 14, yes, let me say that again, 15 total cats he and his mom own. Oh yeah, also he lives with his mom. But really, his mom lives with him, apparently. And the car he's driving in his mom's, but he was keeping it tuned up. Also, he mentioned to his mom that we were going on a date and showed her pictures of me. And she agreed that our features combined would make an agreeable grandchild. WTF. 
nope right out of there, and this guy proceeded to somehow find me in social media without knowing my last name and message me every day for three weeks about why I'm not answering his phone calls or text messages, so I blocked him. Then he found me on another dating app somehow and messaged me on there. The messages included, but were not limited to, how he thinks we would make a great couple and would make a great wife, how if I don't like hats, he has no problem putting them in his garage when I come over, again, all 15 of them, how he'd like to meet my dog he somehow found out I owned, and how he thought I was so pretty, but had I tried being a blonde yet? I deleted the dating app and moved shortly after a few hours away, for unrelated reasons, and met my wonderful, amazingly normal husband. Story 10 He invited me and a friend to play dodgeball with a group of folks I'd never met. We're having an okay time. He's paying more attention to his friends, but that's fine because I've got my friend to keep me occupied. We're hanging out in the parking lot before the first game is about to start, when out of nowhere, he grabs a ball and throws it at me as hard as he can. This idiot screams, Wham! Bam! Right in the clam! I immediately turn to my friend and ask her if she's ready to leave. I say goodbye to him and his friends, immediately came home to a grip of texts about how immature I was behaving. Wait, she went on a date with Peter Griffin? Story 11. This happened in all about 10 minutes. I go to the bar after him, had a glass of water on the table and slid it to me after I sat down. I said it's okay, he could have it and I would get my own. He scoffed and told me I don't even know anything about being I do. Three minutes in, he asked if he could add me on Facebook so that he could help himself with my photos. Told me that I should stop going to the gym because he could barely get me as is and if I lost weight, I'd be too hot and he'd have no chance. Tried to get me to go back to his place. I declined. He offered to let me sleep in his couch to make the idea more appealing. Bragged about how much money he had. Asked me how short I was on rent, saying he'd give me the money right now. I was not short on rent. Never said I was. Told me he could afford an Uber X, but would buy me an Uber pool home because he didn't know me that well. Asked me not to BS him and to be honest, would you go on a second date with me? I said no. He stood up and screamed at me in the bar about how I'm the most shallow person he'd ever met, and that the only possible reason I would say no is because he's not good looking enough for me. Story 12. Met a girl at a nice gastro pub. We started chatting and she was immediately being argumentative and picking holes in every mundane thing I said. She was kind of aggressive about it. She mentioned her best friend who has a very unique name. I knew a girl with the same name and we quickly figured out it was the same person. Turns out the girl I'm dating is best friends with my ex-girlfriend's stepsister. This ex of mine was one of my great loves and broke my heart by cheating after two years of dating. I dated her from 16 to 18, so it was just stupid kid stuff in retrospect and we were never really meant to be together. I told her how my ex and I broke up and she loved the story. What happened next is the best part. Literally to make me uncomfortable and for no other reason, she decided to call my ex right there whom I hadn't spoken to for years. My ex answers and my date hands me the phone. I say, hi, how are you, etc. It was actually nice to speak to her. But the next thing she said is, what the hell are you doing on a date with her? She's nuts. You need to leave. I told my ex that I was quickly figuring that out and thanked her for the advice. I did leave basically right after that. Our food hadn't even arrived yet. I told her that this was not going well and I'm not sure we would want to prolong the torture any longer. I tracked the waitress down across the room, paid for all of our drinks and food and left without saying another word. The total duration, maybe 15 minutes. I later called my ex and thanked her and we rebuilt a friendship. We we're both married and hang out together as a couple. While our relationship failed, there was a lot of love and respect there that isn't burdened by mistakes we made as kids. I'm not sure if we would have become reacquainted without this awful person doing it for us. The girl I was dating later called to apologize. She did a really good and sincere job and owned her part. She admitted she wasn't good at dating and begged for another chance, but I couldn't get over the first impression or the warning I'd been given by someone whose opinion I valued. If this was her and her best behavior, I can only imagine how bad it gets. Years later, I'm sure she too grew from these mistakes, but any desire I had to know her was killed in those first few minutes. I hope she's much better and healthier today. Story 13. I drove us. Started to Parallel Park. Been working and parking in San Francisco for years by then. And he said, I'll park this for you. Women don't do well at parallel parking. At dinner, he was dismissive only to the female waitstaff. I ran into these two hilariously buzzed surfer dudes on my way from the bathroom. They told me my date was a jerk. We laughed about it and I went back to my table. When leaving, the buzzed dudes were also outside. I said bye to them and my jerk date had the nerve to bark. She's with me. I told him to wait while I got in the car and unlocked the doors, except I didn't. I drove off and left him standing there. The two drunk dudes whooped and yelled, Go lady, go! Such an awesome finish to a terribly embarrassing date. The two dudes must have been really good to have around. Story 14. I've been to a few dates. Here's a few stories. Number one, first date, he talks nonstop for almost an hour about how he's fasting for 40 days and becoming spiritually awake like Gandhi and Jesus. People lined up for blocks to get spiritual advice until he had to start charging them, then asks for my birth date, pulls out some compatibility chart, and proceeds to tell me how we are a 10 for communication and compatibility. Number two, the first date, lied about his age, must have been 20 years older, and proceeded to cry, telling me he wanted someone to wake up next to. 
Number three, first date, I just arrived and he began his confession of three years in prison, his Russian bride who was stolen by a brother, and his extremely strange family life. After three hours of listening, finally was able to leave. Felt it had to be a cautiously friendly exit. Number four, first date, he met me at a restaurant. I'm starved and he doesn't eat his food at all. The second date, he took me to an expensive restaurant again. I was starved and again, he didn't eat. So awkward. Number five, this first date goes really well. The dude ends it by saying he almost feels like he wants to say the L word to me. Yikes. Number six, first date, the man suggests a high key is in no way in shape to complete and doesn't even bring enough water. He's like twice my size and really dehydrated, so I offered him some of my water. I reuse bottles all the time, so I told him it really wasn't smart water, it was tap water. He is seriously in a bad place and I know I can't carry him down this mountain, but he refuses to drink the water because he doesn't drink tap water because of the chlorine. He finally gave in when he almost passed out. Story 15. Not my story, but a friend's which has always creeped me out. She met a guy through an app and they got on well chatting so decided to meet up. They had a nice lunch and then went for a walk around the city. When they passed through an alley, he stopped and said, You look so good. I really want to take you home right now. She thought she'd misheard and asked him to repeat it, and he doubled down, I want to throw you down and take you home. She told him how messed up that was and said she was going home and headed for the train. He caught up and said he was only joking and walked with her the rest of the way. Just before the train arrived, he said it again and that it was her fault for looking so good. She told him they were done and not to call her again. She got texts the rest of the week telling her that she was being immature, couldn't take a joke, and was probably loose anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy. Oh god, now I'm screwed. Story 5 was so bad. See you on that video.